Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you guys are all doing well out there wherever you are. On the last video that I posted, which I'm going to link up above, I overclocked the Phenom 2 960T quad core through band, and now I want to sort of focus on one particular aspect of overclocking this chip, and that would be the CPU North Bridge and HT Link. To briefly explain what these are, they're actually part of the CPU. The CPU North Bridge, not to be confused with the North Bridge chip on the motherboard, controls the integrated memory controller and the CPU cache, among other things, while the HT-Link is the part that communicates with the Northbridge chipset, which passes data to and from the PCI Express lanes, uh, among other things. This particular Phenom 2 has a base frequency of 3 GHz, core boost to 3.4, and a typical 6 MB of L3 cache. There are some differences between these and the Deneb CPUs, so this will just be relevant mostly to the Thubans. And I'm also going to be using the same system, the Sabertooth 990FX mainboard with 8GB of DDR3 1866, but I did swap out the R9 Fury for an 8GB RX 580. The Phenom 2s are really fun CPUs to overclock, and you can gain some really decent performance out of them with just a clock increase. So for now, I'm just going to set a simple overclock on the core frequency to 3.8 GHz, and then we're going to start raising our other frequencies and then test along the way to see if there is indeed a performance gain. Since we have an unlocked multi on this black edition, it's going to make it easy to increase the other frequencies while everything else stays consistent, but there's going to come a point where, you, where I'm going to need to increase the reference clock to gain more frequency on the HT link in the RAM. As you can see here, the HT link speed can't go past 2600 MHz at a reference clock of 200, so to push further, that's going to have to be increased. Also, the clock frequency to HT link is derived from the CPU north bridge, so it can never exceed that frequency. And one more thing to consider is heat, since you're most likely going to have to increase the voltage to the CPU North Bridge and the HT Link, which both have their own voltage plane in the CPU. Um, there, there's a chance it could add a little bit more heat, so that's something to keep in mind when overclocking the cores is that you may want to leave a little bit of thermal headroom. Alright, so to start with the CPU at 3.8 GHz, I'm going to test with the CPU North Bridge and HT Link at 2000 MHz each. Then I'm going to raise the CPU North Bridge by 200 until we get to 2800. And then I'm going to repeat that for the HT Link with the CPU North Bridge still at 2800. And I may even push it a little bit higher, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now to the numbers. The first benchmark I ran was a CSGO user made benchmark and you can see from looking at the chart that as we raised the CPU north bridge frequency the average FPS also increased. In this situation it didn't affect the 1% and 0.1% lows. So 2800 MHz gave us the best result, so then I started to increase HT Link. As you can see, it made virtually no difference at all. And I did push a little further, to, I pushed the CPU North Bridge to just over 3000 MHz, and you can see we did get another decent gain in average FPS. But once I increased HT Link again uh, to match, there was still no difference. And for comparison's sake, on this benchmark, I also ran it at the stock configuration with the CPU, you know, just set to auto, and I added the results here as well. So it would appear that raising the HT link has no effect just looking at that one result. But if we go through the settings again using the Tomb Raider built in benchmark, there's a couple things that are going to stand out. This is a 1080p with a normal preset, and you can clearly see the difference raising the CPU north bridge makes. Not just on the average FPS, but here also on the 1% and 0.1% lows. Raising the HT link, however, shows that it seems to favor either no increase or increase to match the CPU north bridge. Raising both to just over 3000 MHz shows that we are still improving. But if we ran this benchmark again on the ultimate preset, which I did, uh, there was absolutely no improvement at all on any of the numbers because at that point it was bound by the GPU. So for the rest of the benchmarks, I'm just going to show the difference between 2000 CPU Northbridge and HT-Link to 2922. 
In Fire Strike, the overall score went from 9832 to 10,082. The graphics score went from 15,375 to 15,456. The physics score went from 5581 to 5678, and the combined score went from 3840 to 4126. In Doom on Ultra at 1080p using Vulcan, we went from an average FPS of 123 with 1% 0.1% lows of 9 and 4 to an average of 142 with 1% 0.1% lows of 94 and 77. And just raising the CPU Northbridge pretty much alleviated all the little stutters that it was having at stock. In Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p high with DX12, the average and lows went from 58, 28, and 10 to 69, 35, and 28. And using Crisis Remastered at 1080p medium settings with high textures and water, the FPS increased from an average of 58 with 1% and 0.1% lows of 23 and 7 to an average FPS of 66 with lows of 35 and 8. And last but not least, GTA 5. At 1080p with a mix of high and very high settings, we went from an average FPS of 52 with lows of 41 and 38 to an average of 77 with lows of 51 and 39. So in conclusion, you can see that in most instances you can see a significant improvement to your Thuban's performance by increasing the CPU north bridge. Not so much the HT-Link, it seems to be best to either keep it at stock frequency or to match your CPU Northbridge frequency. There definitely seems to be some instability in between. And according to AMD and their reference materials for this CPU, uh, you, you want to run your CPU Northbridge at uh, three times your, your base memory speed. So 1600 megahertz memory, you're, you know, that's it doubled, so it's 800, so 3 times 800 would be 2400. So if you run a 1600 memory, uh, they're suggesting that you run your CPU Northbridge at 2400. And as you can see here, you know, as you increase that, you still get even more gains. So I don't know if this is anything that you guys were curious about but you know hopefully somebody found this interesting and uh, you guys take care out there stay safe and I will see you on the next one